Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jonah. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. In fact, I want to start kind of like a mini series within this C++ series, just talking about random C++ things like tips and tricks, that kind of stuff that will hopefully help you guys with some of the more intricate, maybe less known features of C++ or just traps along the way because C++ is full of traps. This basically just started off with me having a long list of things that are just weird and things that I thought that I should probably mention at some point in this series, but didn't really have either the time or the necessity or just, I just didn't know where to fit them in because they're, they're just kind of, you know, little small things. And this, by the way, this is just a prop. The, the list is on Trello. But the point is, there is much to discuss about C++, and so this is where this series comes in. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Today I wanted to talk about something called argument evaluation order. So in other words, if I write a function that has a bunch of arguments and I pass a bunch of arguments into that function, what order do the arguments get evaluated in? Because amongst the arguments, I can actually write expressions which evaluate those arguments. I don't have to pass in the number five into a function that takes in an int. I can pass x plus y or five plus eight. So if I do that, and if I have a lot of arguments, does the first argument get done first and then the second argument gets evaluated and the third one, does it go in reverse order? What happens? How does this work? And the interesting thing is that most people don't know. Most people don't know what this order of evaluation actually is. What do you think it is? Pause this video right now and drop a comment below with your answer. It'll be really interesting to see what the general community thinks. And don't look it up anywhere. Pretend this is like a job interview or something like that. And the thing is, if you're wrong or if you don't know the answer, I don't blame you because this is not something that really comes up in programming. It almost sounds like something that should actually come up more often than it does. But when you're actually writing C++ code, you don't really think about this. And I think it's perfectly reasonable to not know the answer to this because it is kind of, it does involve knowing a little bit more about how the compiler actually compiles the code, what the C++ standard actually specifies for C++ compilers, and also just a lot of experience, I think, will probably lead you to, I guess, naturally knowing the answer to this. And we're gonna dive in here and take a look at some examples and just explore this general problem. But first, I wanna give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an amazing online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It's a massive platform filled with thousands of inspiring classes for people who want to learn a new skill. They've got so many amazing classes on there. I particularly like a lot of their illustration classes. For example, this one is pretty cool. They've even got stuff about productivity in general. So how to improve your productivity because who does not like being productive and who does not struggle with that? And at $10 per month for an annual subscription, it is great value and a great way to spend your time learning new skills. Skillshare is offering two months of free Skillshare premium membership to the first thousand people who sign up using the link in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out for free and learn something new today. Speaking of learning something new, let's take a look at this argument evaluation order, shall we? Okay, so here I have a super simple function called printSum that just takes in two integers and adds them together, prints the result, as well as the two integers that we're feeding into it. This is just a really simple example which will help illustrate this in action. So let's go ahead and create a value here. Let's set it to zero. And then I'm going to call print sum. Now what I'm going to do is write an expression here that needs to get evaluated at some point. So I'm not just going to pass in value, I'm gonna pass in value plus plus, and I will do this twice. So this is a really simple example to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about what will be printed. And if you still haven't left a comment, please leave one right now. I'm really interested to see what you guys think. And I'll be honest, going through this code, I would probably expect it to be something like maybe zero for like this one and then one for this one. If it's evaluating them in a reverse order, maybe it will in fact be zero and then one. Obviously this is a post increment operator, meaning that the original value should get passed in first, then incremented. But then again, that's just my guess. So I expect A to be either one or zero and then B to be either, well, zero or one, depending on what A was. This is probably what I would guess. But then again, I would be wrong because the answer to this is, it's undefined behavior. The C++ standard does not actually define what should happen in the situation, which means it's 
undefined behavior. It means that it's going to vary compiler to compiler. It's completely dependent on the actual implementation of the C++ compiler that has to then translate this code into machine code. Basically, that means this is unreliable and it will be different. So why don't we do some testing? Let's go ahead and run this code right now and see what we get. Okay, so this is my output. One plus zero equals one. Okay, interesting. So it looks like it passed in zero for this first value and then one. So I guess I was right when I said one plus zero equals one. I'm using the Microsoft Visual Studio compiler here, MSVC, and I'm running in debug mode. Let's try release mode and see what we get. Uh, Hang on a minute, zero plus zero equals zero? What? So this doesn't work at all in release mode? Why does this differ release mode to debug mode? What if I change this post increment to be a kind of pre-increment? So in other words, it should increment the value variable first and then pass it into the function. Let's switch both of these to be like this. So in other words, now, if it follows that kind of this parameter is evaluated first in this parameter order, we should get one and two, I guess. Let's run this code. I'm in release mode now and I get two plus two equals four. So, the value is just two for both of these. What about running it in debug mode? I also get two plus two equals four. So this seems kind of, I guess, at least deterministic between debug and release mode. But overall, the point of this exercise is so that you can see that this is a complete mess because it's undefined behavior. You can't predict this behavior. It You're not supposed to do this. Now, the case that is particularly interesting to me is this kind of release mode case of the post increment operator. So in other words, zero plus zero equals zero. What is even happening here? The reason this is happening is because the compiler is actually allowed to work out what these are in parallel. It does not have to first evaluate these arguments in a specified order to see what they are. No, when trying to kind of figure out what this is and using like constant folding in release mode and various other optimizations that basically allow you to work out the value of variables in compile time. So in other words, if I wrote two plus five, instead of actually doing two plus five on the CPU at runtime, it would just set value to seven because that would be a lot simpler. And it's definitely something that can be calculated during compile time. The point being that it does not have to first do this in some kind of order where we have value plus plus, and then that's one. And therefore, since it's been changed to one, it now uses that one to increment here, which means that one gets passed into here and then incremented to two. It doesn't need to do that. It's actually able to kind of just be like, okay, well value zero, value plus plus, okay. So zero passing zero here, passing zero here, then do a little plus plus at the end. It doesn't really matter. It's allowed to do that up until C++ 17. So the interesting thing is if we change this to actually use the C++ 17 standard instead of like 14 or lower, then if I run this, we're actually going to get a different result. And in fact, we're going to get one plus zero equals one because the C++ standard added a new rule starting with C++ 17 that post fix expressions have to be evaluated before each other expression and with respect to that of any other parameter, meaning they have to be done one after the other. It still doesn't really, it's still it's still not deterministic which order it will actually be evaluated in, meaning will this be one and this be zero or is it gonna do zero and then one for the A and B variable respectively? This order is still undefined. However, they're now not gonna be the same because it has to do one after the other. Let's explore this in different compilers. So to summarize, it looks like in C++ C++ 17, which is probably what you're using anyway, at least C++ 17, maybe you're even one of the cool kids using the C++ 20 draft. One plus zero equals one is what we get using Visual Studio's compiler. Now I like using a little website here called onebox.org. It's basically just a little online compiler which has a whole bunch of different C++ versions as well as different compilers as you can see. If I paste our code into there and run it using GCC and the C++ 20 draft, then first of all, you'll notice this is a little bit more helpful than the MSVC compiler which gave us no warnings. This at least tells us that this operational value may be undefined, which you know is correct. But you can see we also get one plus zero equals one. Now going back to like C++ 14, let's see what that gets us. Still one plus zero equals one, interesting. And then finally, let's switch over to Clang and take a look at what Clang gives us. And I'll run this in C++ 20 here, zero plus one equals one, interesting. So it looks like Clang does it the other way around. And then finally, if I drop back to C++ 14, just just to see, I also get zero plus one equals one, but you can see the Clang also does in fact warn us. So it's just MSVC who seems to just, I'm not even sure why they don't at least print a warning for something like this, but you can see if I rebuild this in either debug mode or release mode, it's not gonna warn me at all about anything wrong with my code.
So thanks, MSVC. So to summarize, if you get this question in a job interview or programming test or whatever, the correct answer is it's undefined because C++ does not actually provide, the C++ specification does not actually provide a definition for what should happen in the situation of what order parameters or arguments should get evaluated in. But bonus points if you mention that C++17 does say that these things cannot be done at the same time, that is to say that they have to be done one after the other. But again, the order is not actually defined in the specification which means that you technically have no way of knowing what this is. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below in case I missed something or I didn't test it in some kind of mode that you that you have tested it in. Then drop a comment below. Let's share some knowledge in this community because we're all in this together. I hope you guys enjoyed this new kind of mini C++ series style video. Let me know other topics that you want me to cover in the future. And finally, don't forget the Skillshare is offering the first 1000 people who click the link in the description below two free months of Skillshare Premium. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.